continuing our exploration of PHP, let's now take a look at operators. Operators in programming languages allow you to perform calculations, comparisons, logic, and evaluations, as well as modify and manage data. There are five basic types of operators in PHP. They are mathematical, comparison, logical, bitwise, and ternary. First, let's break down the arithmetic operators. They are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the modulus operator, which returns the remainder left over after division. The modulus operator is useful for all kinds of things, like telling whether numbers are even or odd. Now, the symbols used to represent these are plus for addition, the dash for subtraction, the asterisk for multiplication, the forward slash for division, and the percent symbol, which signifies the modulus operator. Next, let's examine comparison operators. The very first one we'll take a look at is evaluates2, which is two equal symbols right next to each other. Now, in mathematics, to say equals, it only requires one equal symbol. But in programming, to say equals is evaluates2, and that requires two equal symbols right next to each other. A common mistake people make when they first get into programming is confusing assignment with equals. In other words, if I have x equals y, and I write that in code, it's not the same as x equals y in mathematics. In mathematics, I'm saying x is equal to whatever the value of y is. But in programming, I'm saying take what is to the right of the assignment operator and store it in what is to the left of the assignment operator. So in other words, in programming, I would be saying take the value of y and store it inside of x. If I wanted to say whether or not x was equal to y, I'd have to use two equal symbols, which would be evaluates to. Okay. With that out of the way, there's also not equal to, which is the exclamation point, the logical not and equal to. You can also use the less than and greater than symbol to say not equal to. And then of course you have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. Next are the logical operators. You have logical and, which is two ampersands right next to each other. You have logical or, which is two pipe symbols right next to each other. And you can also use keywords such as AND, OR, uh, XOR, which is exclusive OR, and then the exclamation point, which is the logical NOT. And that negates whatever follows it. Moving on, now we come to the bitwise operators. For bitwise operators, we use a single ampersand for AND, a single pipe symbol for OR, the caret for exclusive OR, the tilde for NOT, and then two greater than symbols to shift bits to the right and two less than symbols to shift bits to the left. Sort of like the data stream operator in ANSI C++. If you are new to bitwise operations, bits are the infinitesimally small switches that compose your computer's memory. There are eight bits in a byte, and many integers are composed of 32-bit or four-byte values. Bitwise operators are used frequently when coding algorithms that function with board games. Games that do this are said to use bit boards. In order to see how decimal base 10 numbers are stored as binary base 2 numbers, watch the video Subnetting Binary Base 2 and Decimal Base 10. When you AND bits together, if both bits are 1, then the result is true. However, if one or both bits happen to be 0, then the result is false. Only if all bits are 1 does the bitwise AND return true. When you OR bits together, if either bit is 1, the statement returns true. Only if both bits are zero would the statement return false. And yeah, the exclusive OR operator, utilizing the caret, evaluates to true only if one bit is on timing. and one bit is off. That is, a one and a zero. The last type of operator that we will examine is ternary. These use three operands to perform a single operation. Look at the following bit of code. We have two variables. <laughs> happy ending with the value of 75 and sad ending with the value of 25. Now we're going to incorporate these variables into a ternary expression. So we're going to say if sad ending is less than happy ending, which is true, then the question mark echo true love's first kiss. If it's false, on the other hand, on the other side of the colon, echo love unrequited. Again, let me rephrase this. So if sad ending is less than happy ending, the server will write true love's first kiss. Outset will write love unrequited. The first part of the expression tests for a Boolean condition is sad ending less than happy ending. After this condition is tested, one of two actions listed after the question mark will be performed. If true, the first action before the colon is performed. If false, 
The second action after the colon is performed. Since we're discussing ternary expressions, why don't we also review incrementing and decrementing? Incrementing a variable is a shorthand method of adding 1 to it. For example, x plus plus is the same as saying x is equal to x plus 1. Decrementing a variable is a shorthand method of subtracting 1 from it. For example, x minus minus is the same as saying x is equal to x minus 1. There are two options, postfix to increment or decrement after returning a value, and prefix to increment or decrement before returning a value. To further illustrate the differences between these two, let's look at the example. To the left, you see postfix increment. We have two variables, a and b. a has a value of 100. b is going to be assigned the value of a, but a is undergoing a postfix increment. So a is going to return the value and assign it to b first and then increment or add 1 to itself. So here, b would be 100 and a would be 101. Now look at the right column. In this case, we have the same two variables. But a, instead of receiving a postfix increment, now receives a prefix increment. So then what will happen is a will add 1 to itself first and then return the value and assign it to b. So in this second example, both b and a have the value 101. In addition, there are self-assignment variations when using the assignment operator. Look at the following table. In the left column, we have a shorthand self-assignment method. And in the right column, we have the way you would normally write out an expression. So we have two variables, a and b, with values 1,111 and 444. Now, look at the first example. Variable a plus equals b. That's the same as writing out a is equal to a plus b. a minus equals b is the same as writing a is equal to a minus b. a and then multiplication or the asterisk equals b is the same as saying a is equal to a times b. And then a forward slash equals b is the same as saying a is equal to a divided by b. a modulus equals b is the same as saying a modulus operator b, so the remainder being returned after division. And then finally, we have two string variables, c and d, for skyward sort. And we can also do this with concatenation. So in this case, c dot equals d is the same as saying c is equal to the string c concatenated to the string d. Let's briefly review mathematical operators and precedents. Remember that the four mathematical operators are for multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, and also the modulus operator, which returns the remainder left over after division. Um, you have precedence in programming, just as you do in mathematics. Uh, so in other words, multiplication and division bind tighter than do addition and subtraction. And just like in mathematics, you can alter that precedence with parentheses. So anything put inside of parentheses uh, will receive higher precedence than something outside of the parentheses. And that can have a profound effect on your calculations and algorithms. So let's just go over some of the basics here. Notice in this first example, um, x is 2, y is 2, and the result here is initialized with 0. So we're just going to add and display the result, subtract, display the result, multiply, and divide. Here we're going to use the modulus operator, which will simply show the remainder left over after division. And I'll run the script and we'll see the results, but I'm just trying to be brief and not waste too much of your time here. Um, same thing here with the modulus operator, simply going to return uh, you know, the remainder left over after division. Okay. Now, if we look down here, in this expression, you know, y will be multiplied uh, times z because you, know, you have higher precedence here. This operation, multiplication, binds tighter than addition. So without any parentheses, this would happen first, and then you know, we would add x to the result of y times z. Same thing with division. Division binds tighter, so this operation here that I'm highlighting with the mouse cursor would be performed first, and then this operation second. Now down here, as an example, I'm using parentheses to alter precedence. So although normally this would bind tighter, and this would bind tighter, if I use parentheses, then I can force addition to occur first, and then the result of the addition process between x and y would be multiplied times z. The same here is true for division. I could force subtraction to have a higher precedence than you know, what is normal. Normally division has higher precedence than subtraction. And in this case, what's in parentheses would be done first. So um, x minus y, and then the result of that would be divided by z. Okay. 
So just to sort of give you an idea, um, I don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time on this, but you know, just a very quick breakdown in uh, PHP. So let's run the script and take a look at it. Okay, and just going through here, the results of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the modulus operator. So you can sort of see how all that works. If you need to pause you know, the video and go over the results, that, that's fine, but I don't think there's anything here that is gonna throw us for a loop. Probably all basic stuff that you're very well aware of. 